Hey guys, this will be a video on how to install the SwiftTech MCP655 pump into the Coolance COV RP450 pump top and add the reservoir on top of the pump top. This is also a Coolance reservoir. So this pump, the SwiftTech, originally when you get it from the manufacturer has its own plastic top on it that's extremely ugly and, and bulky and hard to use so Coolants in addition to other companies they offer uh, modular pump tops that can fit onto various types of pumps and then some of them allow reservoirs to be installed directly on the top and others uh, do not so we'll, uh, we'll get started the first step is to remove the o-ring from the pump top that comes from Coolants. The, uh, the instructions uh, say that you are not to use the o-ring that comes with the SwiftTech pump. You want to use the one that comes with the, the actual pump top from Coolants. So we'll install the o-ring onto the pump. The next step is to place the pump into the top it just sets in there now at this point you want to try to figure out where you want the wires coming from from the pump uh, because once we once we tie this down or once we screw this down the the pump will not be able to turn so we have our our two our inlet and our outlet on the pump top where our compression fittings will go and so you, so you can plan for the tubing coming out of these two holes and then the, the wiring for the pump, you have to, have to decide w which way you want the wiring to go essentially. Uh, for my build, uh, I don't know exactly how it'll fit into the, into the case just yet, but I'm going to plan for the wires for the wires coming out the same side as the inlet and the outlet uh, tubing uh, because of how I think I'll have to put the pump into into my case. So we'll arrange it like this. The next step is to take the, the metal back plate, place it on the, the back of the pump. Next you take the uh, this piece here, The this is the the casing for the pump. You feed your wires through it. And you place it down onto the pump. Now, this is another point where you have to make a decision on how you're going to install the pump into your case. The, the bracket that's part of this pump has this piece here and this is what you can connect to your uh, this is how you install it onto your radiator so whether you're gonna set the pump just you know into your into your case uh, depending on how you're gonna mount it if you're gonna mount it onto uh, to fans or directly to a radiator you need to decide how you want where you want this this ridge here uh, on which side of the pump because once you screw it down, um, it cannot be changed, you know, unless you take apart the pump completely and reassemble it. So this side is going to be connected to my radiator. So I'm planning for the, the tubing to exit the pump in this direction. So... check that everything is still aligned. The next step is to screw down this bracket with the, the four included screws. So we want to make sure these are nice and tight because this is what essentially holds the, the pump, which 
is simply sealed with the o-ring between the pump and the the actual top uh, the o-ring and then these four screws are the only thing keeping it sealed from from water leaking so you want to make sure that these these four screws are nice and tight okay now that the pump top is installed onto the pump the next step will be to install the reservoir so I got this this reservoir from coolants they sell they sell different heights or lengths they range from 30 millimeter tall I believe to 240 maybe um, pr pretty tall this is the 50 this is the 50 millimeter so this is the second smallest one uh, I have such a small case with the 350d that I uh, need to use a small small reservoir so because I don't have so much so much space so the next step will be installing the re reservoir first thing you want to do is unscrew the the center cap this is where the reservoir will go uh, you have the option of using the the attached reservoir with this top or you can leave this plug in and attach an external reservoir just to the to the inlet on the on the pump so depending on your setup depending on how much room you have a lot of people like to use an external pump and actually have a tube going from the reservoir down to the pump but in this case where it's going to be all one unit because I don't have a, I don't have that much space so we'll remove the the cap the next step will be installing the diffuser this is a piece of metal that comes with the comes with the system and is essentially used to prevent the cyclone effect from occurring inside inside your reservoir as the pump sucks water well, sucks water in and, and pushes it out so there's two holes on the top here we take our diffuser we line it up the next step will be installing the actual reservoir so in order to attach the reservoir you use the reservoir coupler that comes with the system it has two o-rings one goes on on each side one for the reservoir and one for the actual pump so we'll take the o-ring and set it into the coupler and then we'll take the coupler and screw it in to the pump top you want to check and make sure that the the o-ring has not squeezed out of any of the sides that's why I held it upside down when I screwed it in to uh, to keep the o-ring from shifting to either side so we'll screw that in tight next we'll do the same thing for the reservoir side we'll set the o-ring into the coupler take our reservoir and screw it on this is a hard acrylic plastic uh, but it's, it can still be broken with your hand so we're gonna we're not gonna tighten it down too much just yet uh, until we test out the pump with water um, if we have leaks then we'll know we need to tighten it more but until then we're not gonna we're not gonna tighten it down um, too much so the next step would normally be installing the reservoir top so this reservoir top is an additional piece you can get from cool ants uh, it has a fill port on the top which can be used with a, a barb fitting or a compression fitting and then uh, you can add tubing to it to, to easily fill your system we're not going to do that right now because I'm just going to test the pump outside of the case and it'll be easier to, to pour water directly into the reservoir so that's how we'll test it the next step will be in installing our fittings onto the inlet and the outlet I have two straight compression fittings also from Coolants. 
and we'll screw them on. They have the O-ring installed um, straight straight from the factory, so you want to make sure that that O-ring is, is still in there, has not fallen out. Should be good. Now we'll do the leak test. So I've cut cut a short piece of cable, or excuse me, tubing uh, for my for this test here. This is the Primo Flex Advanced LRT tubing. It is three eighths ID, five inch OD. So we'll attach it onto our fittings. Now, I noticed when I took this tubing out of the packaging that the inner diameter looked extremely small. It didn't quite look like it was 3 8 it looked, it looked smaller than that. Um, I've heard of different variances in tubing that you can run across where the tubing will not be the exact size that it says on the packaging. Luckily, this tubing does... It, it, it is five inch, five five eighths inch outer diameter, which allows our our fittings to to fit over the tubing. However, the inner diameter seems to be a bit small, so we're going to have to do the boiling water trick to get this this end of tubing onto this other fitting. Okay, so I did the boiling water trick in order to get the tubing to fit onto the the fitting here, uh, what you do is you boil some water and put it in a cup and then you just dip the the end of the tubing into the boiling water for maybe 10 seconds uh, and it loosens it up a bit so that you can fit it over onto the onto the fitting. Luckily this tubing is it's, it was pretty close to the size so I didn't have to, to stretch it too much and it, it went on um, pretty easily after I put it in boiling water. So now now that we have our fittings on, we have our reservoir on, and we have our tubing connected, we are going to test out the pump. So I have some uh, distilled water here that I will pour into the reservoir. So the pump is on. I don't know if if you can see it. Um, you might see some some bubbles. You can you can kind of see the water flowing through the uh, through the tubing. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. But we'll let this run for a bit. Make sure there's no leaks. So this pump, there's different variances of this SwiftTech pump, but this one came with a PWM connector. So there's there's the basic pump that has no no connect no PWM connector and no speed control. Uh, there's another model that has a a additional dial that goes on the that's on the bottom of the pump that you turn with the screwdriver and can control the speed of the pump. And then there's this one, which has the PWM connector. So I will be able to connect it straight to the motherboard and can control the speed of it that way. Okay, that is how you install a SwiftTech MCP655 pump into a coolant pump top with the attached reservoir. Thanks for watching.